hello friends my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial in past few video tutorials we have seen how to simulate the deadlock situation in Java program and we have seen also a few tools which belongs to the JDK itself like JStack as well as visual VM and that helps us to detect the deadlock situation deadlock problem in our application in this video tutorial we'll see some uh, points like how deadlock can be prevented and how we can avoid it like so there are some points i have listed so here uh, i would like to say first of all we can avoid deadlock condition by knowing its possibilities it's a very complex process and not easy to catch but still if you if we try we can avoid this there are some methods by which we can avoid this condition we can't completely remove it its possibility but we can reduce of course so let's see the some few points here i have listed like first point i have listed avoid nested locks so here explanation is pretty straightforward avoid net nested locks this is the most common reason for deadlock avoid locking another resource if you already hold one it is almost impossible to get deadlock if you are working with only one object lock right so if you are your thread is working with single lock then there is no chance for the deadlock if uh, multiple threads are uh, basically fighting to get acquire the uh, more than one locks and then there is possibility for the uh, deadlock situation now second point uh, avoid unnecessary locks we should have lock only those members which are required having locks on the unnecessarily can lead to the deadlock situation now third point using thread join deadlock condition appears when one thread is waiting uh, other to finish if this condition occurs we can use thread dot join so join is another method in thread class which is a static method so you can call by class name itself uh, so there are three variants of join uh, first join which doesn't take any parameter and the remaining two there are uh, two extra join method which takes for uh, long as an argument and third uh, which takes long as well as nanoseconds uh, as well I mean uh, you can pass two kind of uh, uh, time first is in millisecond and second is in nanoseconds right so with max uh, so if you call threads or join with maximum time you think the execution will take right if you think your thread will uh, take uh, this much amount to uh, time to execute your work then you can call a join method by passing that much, that much amount of time that also helps you to avoid the deadlock situation now next point if you are using only synchronized code blocks make sure that locks are acquired and released in the certain order and that kind of example already we have seen in the past video tutorial now next suggestion uh, a lock free data structure cannot cause deadlock like uh, you have a concurrent linked queue right is an example of lock free data structure you can offer or pull the queue from the multiple threads without needing to synchronize access to it right so uh, these are the data structure basically that uh, they are you don't require basically uh, a kind of uh, synchronized block so th that is already implemented by using those concepts so you don't need to uh, fear about the deadlock uh, if you are using this kind of inbuilt uh, data structure right which is lock free and now last point i would like to say uh, look out for other alternative like you may use the volatile keyboard or atomic integer atomic long atomic boolean variables uh, as well as lock api right so that will basically helps you to avoid the deadlock situation when we talk about the lock api then i would like to show you uh, one of the class that is very famous reintrant lock and basically this class basically if you scroll down then this class basically implements lock interface and if you look into the uh, uh, methods which is available in this class uh, definitely by looking into this method you can uh, check this will definitely help you to avoid the deadlock situation like we have a method is called lock which will helps you to acquire the lock now we have another method like uh, try lock right here you can see the try lock 
and you can see the method description over here saying that acquires the lock only if it is not held by the another thread at the time of invocation now next method we have a try lock and there you can pass the time in milliseconds right uh, time in different uh, like here first is a long and second is the time unit and time unit has a lot of uh, i mean constant here you can specify time in milliseconds nanoseconds uh, seconds or whatever time unit you want to take you can pass and here basically you can look into the method de description saying that acquires the lock if it is not held by the another thread within the given waiting time and the current thread has not been interrupted and and here most important method unlock attempts to release the lock so you have more control over the lock but if you are using a synchronized block right if you are writing synchronized block to protect your code then you don't have uh, i mean more control over intrinsic lock right which is used by the java right but if you use uh, uh, classes like a reentrant lock then you have a more control over the locking mechanism right so if there is some problem occurs then finally block you can release the lock right so definitely this class will explore in the future video tutorial but before that we have to see a lot of basic concept into multi-threading in java so guys i hope you enjoyed learning this video if you really like this video then please uh, hit on the like button and please share and subscribe my youtube channel and uh, i need your support and basically uh, that uh, if you provide the i mean comments uh, how is my uh, video tutorial then that, that definitely that is uh, giving me chance to improve myself or that uh, encourages me to upload more and more videos so please do subscribe my youtube channel and uh, you can recommend to your friends as well uh, if you feel that is really beneficial for you so guys big thank you for watching this video and let's meet in the next video tutorial with something new so thank you and see you there in next video tutorial